Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to the O'Byrne House for worship today. Before we begin in worship, let's just bow our heads. Thank you, Father, for this morning, and uh, just thank you for the worship songs that we are about to sing. Father, we pray that you meet with us as we uh, lift up our voices to you, your church. Uh, we know that we can't meet together, but we know that we're unified in, in serving you, Father, and serving our Father and trusting in you, believing in you. So, Father, just bless your church this morning as we worship. Thank you, Father. Amen. still able to meet uh, although we have to look at a screen uh, father you know you're much much more powerful than just being limited to uh, meeting with us because we're looking at screens because we're not in the same place so father we just ask for you to meet with each of us individually um, father we uh, just lift you up as our king as our savior and when we sing these songs we want to think on the truth of these songs um, and that you're worthy of our praise Father, we just want to sing this with faith. So we just want to challenge you to just seek the Lord this morning as we continue. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, I'll worship. 
worship your holy name. See how the sun comes up. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may
and proclaim my love for him. Right, sing that again. Sing it again. There's only one church. Oh, he has paid the highest price.
know that you are the only way to the Father. And Son, that your Son is the only way to the Father. We acknowledge that you are the King of our lives. You're the King. Father, we just want to proclaim you. Know that you gave your Son for us, Father. And we confess our sins to him. And our sins are forgiven. And our confidence is in you. That you have a place for us in heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the confidence of the scripture that we can read. We can pray it out. We can sing it out. We know that the promises are true. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for being living and active in our lives. Thank you that you are listening to us sing now. So, Father, just listen to our hearts as we sing this again. We're going to sing this. You're never going to let me down. And, Father, just hear it as your kids who are crazy in love with you. None of us are perfect, but Christ was perfect. Christ gave his life for us. What we have accepted he was our mediator. He went to sin and death and got the victory for us. Father, we just proclaim these next proclamations of our trust in you, proclamations of taking each step forward and just singing this song. Let our hearts just proclaim this truth. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me listen with your ears and just have a heart ready to be filled with the word you're bringing today, Lord Jesus. Um, Father, just humble each of us to um, put on the humility that you displayed in the scripture reading of uh, your time on earth, Father, and your ministry, Lord. For Thank you, Father, for showing us how to do it, um, how to live this life um, that shows true love, this love of sacrifice that you live, Father. The, the life that you do live in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. We just thank you for the word that's coming. So we just ask for a blessing on that word. We just ask for ourselves to be humble enough, ready to hear it, um, and just ready to apply it to our lives. Thank you, Father, in your beautiful, wonderful name. Amen. Amen. So dear friends of Prague Christian Fellowship, uh, it's an honor to bring you the Word of God today. And um, I got uh, from your pastor John Mullen a text I will preach on. And I want to say that this is, uh, I found what this is one of the most important uh, places for us Gentiles, uh, or used to be Gentiles, or from the uh, not Jewish uh, heritage. Uh, because in this chapter 10 of Acts, uh, actually, uh, this is the breakthrough breakthrough of gospel 
from the Jewish uh, people to the Gentiles. Uh, and uh, without this chapter 10, this uh, would be a sad story because it would stay just for the Jews. But we can find out that uh, because the chapter 10 and two obedient people, uh, then the gospel was spread among, among the Gentiles and therefore we can be saved to get today, you and me. So I called this uh, preaching the breaking news. You can hear the breaking news in the news, but this breaking news a news really is not really breaking, is uh, fresh news or maybe important that day, but this breaking news was breaking from the area of the Jewish community to Gentile community and it was really breaking through. So let's go and uh, see what is there and we can learn from there something can be breaking through not only because the gospel is already spread among the Gentiles, so this will not happen again, but when is the breaking through, and we have a two people, as I said, Peter on one side and Cornelius on the other side, and maybe you need a breakthrough in your life. Maybe you need breakthrough which you are waiting for in your life, that you need some help, you need something, or you are the one who will make the breakthrough. You will be like the Peter. He, will, he was coming to the Cornelius, as we will see. Um, the both ways are important. Sometimes we are the one who are expecting the intervention of God. On the other hand, we are the one who wants the Lord to use for help to others, to bring the word and the uh, Lord's power toward others. So if it's so or so, we still need some attitudes. We need some attitude of our hearts and we will learn from this place how we can um, uh, prepare ourselves to be or receivers or givers in this breakthrough. So it starts about the uh, Cornelius. He was a uh, certain man, was uh, in, uh, and he was a certain young, centurion. So he had a hundred people under him, and uh, he was from the Italian regim regiment, which was the occupation army in Israel. But he, it's written here that he was a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to people, to the people, and prayed to God always. So the first thing, if we want to break through, we need to have a fear of God. Cornelius had a fear of God, and because he had a fear of God, the um, Lord used him. If you want to, if you want to be used by God, the beginning is in fear of God. It's not a fear in the sense of the trembling. We don't have a, we don't have a spirit of fear, but the fear of God, or of of God, it's um, it's a mixture of respect, love, um, uh, honor, uh, just to, we honor God that he's a God and, uh, and we live by that. So the fear of God is a, a very f fundamental thing, uh, attitude, if we want to receive of, from God or if you want to be used by God. And Cornelius, he had that. And as he had this uh, attitude, one day, the uh, Lord sent an uh, angel to him, an angel. And uh, he saw that. And uh, the angel told him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa, 
or Joppa, if you want, and sent for Simon, uh, whose surname is Peter. Your prayers and your alms have come up for memorial for a memorial before God. I could understand the prayers, okay? If we pray, we pray to God, and oh, but the alms, but yes, alms are uh, important. And if we would say the prayers go up there, the alms are between us people, but both. And if you can see the cross, the both is important. And it's written that both alms and prayers came up to the Lord. And because it was enough of alms and prayer, and Lord God saw that there is a man, Cornelius, he's useful. He can, God can rely on him. So he said, okay, now Angel, go to him and arrange this meeting between him and Peter. And uh, if the first point was uh, have a fear of God, the second point is be generous toward people and in prayer toward God. Have a gratitude attitude. Have a thankful heart. The gratitude is the if we give alms, it's because God blessed me, I'm blessing the others. And it doesn't have to be money. Some people don't need your money. Some people need your time. Some people need your love. Some people need your time, or I, I said already the time, but love, time, energy, I would say, your help, or just to be with them. So have a gratitude heart. Give to others because Lord gave to you. And uh, it opens the door for God's power. So this was a Cornelius. And uh, he sent uh, three men next day to Peter. Actually, this is interesting. Angel was saying something. There was no person. There was no any 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 a proof that there is some Peter somewhere. But based on that, uh, he sent Cornelius sends uh, three people to the city, which is sixty kilometers from there. Um, and next day, when they were coming, uh, Peter. Uh, Peter was hungry. It was around the noon. He was angry, and we can uh, see here that uh, we can read here that he was uh, on the housetop, like on the roof, and they were preparing the food for him. And uh, he was praying, and he fell into trance, as we can um, uh, read here. Uh, Ecstasy is that the the word Greek for that for the trance. And saw, and he saw heaven open, and the objects like a great sheet um, bound at four uh, corners, descending to him and led it down to the earth. In uh, in it were all kinds of four-footed animals uh, of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, which is in Greek herpeton and birds of the air and the voice came to him race peter kill and eat but peter said no 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 lord i have never eaten anything common or unclean and the voice spoke to him what god has cleansed you must not call common wow he had a vision um was not I mean, in a natural, but it was supernatural vision. And uh, he saw different animals in that sheet, which Lord says, kill and eat. He was, remember, he was hungry, hungry. Um, but it has nothing to do with that. Uh, Lord want to prepare him for the next moments which are coming. 
and Lord uh, says, kill and eat. And Peter, <laughs> he said, no, Lord. You know, he was not resisting the just the voice. He was resisting to the Lord. And he said, I have never, I never did something like that. If I would uh, expand that, he would say, it's written in your in Old Testament, or it's written there. Um, yeah, I should not eat it, and I never ate it. This because your word is saying that I should not. And Lord says, "What God has cleansed, or cl cleansed, uh, you must not call common." He doesn't change the word in Old Testament. It's still unclean, but it's written if God cleans that. It's clean. So God can clean that. And if he will, so it's clean. But he has to first cleanse that. And this was a message. This was a picture, allegory for uh, the thing which were coming. And this allegory came uh, because he didn't understand what's going on. The, the, the allegory came to the real reality uh, while uh, afterwards Peter was still thinking about that and Holy Spirit speaks to him three men are seeking you arise go down and go with them doubting nothing for I have sent them so what we can learn from that sometimes we have some you know visions we see some things, we have some uh, impressions, but uh, can we learn from that? Even we don't understand. We need to have a heart which is open and a heart which expects that the Lord will speak to us and we want to obey. So the first was first point was have a fear of God. Second, have a gen be generous toward people and uh, be generous on prayer toward God. And the third point is expect that the Lord will speak to you and obey his word. God will take anything to speak to us so we understand him and not only understand but we will obey. The faith in God is that we will do what he says. If we just play with God, he can say anything, but we will not do anything because we don't have a faith in him. But if you have a faith in him, so when he speaks, obey. Tell him, uh, I will go. Here I am. I will go. So... Um, he was Peter was uh, coming down and talking to the uh, to the three, and they had a good news for him. Uh, and they said about the Cornelius. They said that he's just a man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews was uh, divinely instructed by a uh, holy angel to summon you or bring you to his house and to hear words from you. Uh, they said, this is a man of good reputation. We need to have a good reputation. It's not that we will do anything what people want to do. But if we have a fear of God, we will uh, give alms to people, we will pray, we can have a good reputation among the people. And we need that. Sometimes it's uh, costly. It's uh, we have to put aside us, our desires, and, but uh, to have a good reputation, it's opening door. It's not that uh, things will change, but it is that the doors are open and uh, God's power can go to us or through us to others. 
So first is fear of God. Second is alms, prayers. Third is expectation that the Lord will speak. Fourth is a good reputation. And based on this, uh, Peter goes and he comes to the house of Cornelius. And uh, uh, the first thing, Cornelius bound down and, and Peter has to uh, lift him up and says, I'm just a man as you. And uh, then he says, uh, you know how unlawful, unlawful. It is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation's nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Okay, this is the explanation or interpretation of the vision. Therefore, I came with that objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked then, for what reason? Have you sent for me? This is really divine appointment. On one hand is a, a Gentile soldier, centurion. On other hand is a man who was walking with Jesus, was witness or everything before he was dead and witness after he was raised from the dead. And that now it comes to reality what he heard from Holy Spirit and the, another one from the angel. And uh, the Peter says, I wouldn't come here if God would not tell me. But he did come. So the number five is do not hesitate to go to new things. If you want to see breakthrough, in your life, you need to break new things. You need, if you want to, if you need a break for yourself, you need to go to new things. And if you want to see the breakthrough in the kingdom of God, you need to go to new things, which God prepares for you. God, Lord, leads you to. This is number five. So, if you if you want to be used. Put aside your preferences and submit to the preferences of God. If you will not, you will never ever uh, uh, see in your life or experience the breakthrough. Always there are new things, new ways how Lord wants to do. And you know what? To go to new things, we need to have a faith, a real faith in Him. So, build up your faith and go to new things in which Lord will lead you to. So, and then there's uh, the last thing, uh, what I want to mention, the last point, and that's uh, that uh, Peter was preaching the gospel to people which gathered together and they were listening. And as he was uh, preaching, uh, as he was speaking in a verse 44 is written, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word. And those of the uh, circumcision who believed, like the Jewish, who believed, uh, they were astonished. And they were surprised. They didn't expect that. So what is it? It is that there was so important situation that uh, was important that the God himself will do it. That God himself will confirm that the Jew, the, the Gentiles are, are called to the gospel same way as the Jewish people. So he gave Holy Spirit. It probably when they when Jesus, when Peter was speaking the faith raised inside of this people and the Holy Spirit came upon them and uh, Peter said can anyone forbid water that the disease should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have uh, no so they were baptized in water 
the number six lesson we can take from that watch what lord has blessed what is he doing and be part of the work watch around do your business do what you're supposed to and expect god to bless that and if you see the blessing somewhere be part of that uh, let lord use you to to confirm the things of god and uh, then the breakthrough comes as that time of the first church so if i would summarize that first was have a fear of god number one have a fear of god it's a basement is a ba base thing it's a base thing it's foundation be generous give alms toward people and uh in prayer toward god it's a uh, up is prayer and uh to the people is the uh, generosity the third expect that the lord will speak to you and obey his word expect that if you see some vision wait for the explanation and understand that the lord is giving the vision because he wants to use you number four build your good reputation good name take care because this is a vessel good reputation is a vessel for gospel number five do not hesitate and go to new things uh, put aside your preferences and take god's preferences what he wants and then enter in a break through and the last number six is uh, watch what lord has blessed and be part of his work jesus said uh, i am doing what i am seeing my father is doing we need to see that what god is doing to be part of that so if you want if we want to have some breakthroughs in our lives on lives of others so have a fear of god be generous on prayer expect lord speaking build good reputation do not hesitate to go to new things and watch what lord is doing and be part of that may lord bless your heart in this time so you are part of his breakthroughs in many lives around you god bless <music>